Pues sí. Sí. La realidad de bomberas, ¿ha visto? Abril, ya te va a sebular, ni una. Sebular, ni una. Y así, ¿cómo te vas a abrir? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good uh, evening to everybody. So, how are you guys today? Fiona? Still good to go for the for the class today? Yes, doctor. Still good. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, nice meeting with you, everybody. Okay, all right. So, uh, now we have a sixty number of uh, students. Uh, joining the session. I hope that uh, all students, you know, could join this as soon as possible. Uh, and today we are going to discuss about the uh, chapter five and six. Uh, if we follow the books uh, as I uploaded into the e-learning, you can refer to the chapter two and three as attached in the week number six. All right. Uh, what kids as a reference? Although the books are quite old, but actually the reference over there is still uh, is still uh, justifiable and is still is still uh, could be used up until today because of it's in line with our current industries in 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 Malaysia, right? Uh, you know, Watkins actually is a practitioner of the uh, or consultant for the uh, technology transfer as well as uh, the researcher or scholar for the technology transfer and commercialization. So uh, this book is very very good. Uh, and of course, I'm waiting for a latest version of the Watkins from Watkins. And hopefully, if we have the opportunity to have it by within this semester, I will share to everybody the file, inshallah. 
All right, so we wait for a few moments until uh, we have all the students, or at least 8% of the students joining the session. And please be informed, uh, this session is recorded. So for those who, uh, you know, who attended the class today, you will have to sign attendance uh, as usual using a Google form. And please be sure to those who attended only uh, can fill up the attendance form, all right? So, okay, we wait for a few uh, minutes uh, before we go and we start the class. Thank you. Okay, now I think we have a number of uh, more than uh, 25 students joining the session. Please remind your friends uh, to join this uh, this class as soon as possible because of uh, we are going to discuss two chapters by today, uh, which is uh, chapter number five and number six. If we, are, we, we, we uh, manage to finish up uh, these two chapters by today, by tomorrow, I'm going to just giving you a brief about group assignment. Uh, so, we are, we, are, we are going to focus on the group Simon brief on your vital world knowledge. All right, so okay, thank you very much. Before we, we uh, start or we begin with the class, guys, do you have any question regarding on the previous, uh, you know, uh, revision that I asked you to, to do? If you have any question, please, uh, we might have a few minutes, you know, for Q&A session before we uh, begin with the class. All right, any question, guys? regarding on your assignment, on your previous, uh, you know, topics and so on. Please, if you have any question. No question? No question, doctor. No question, oh, surprising. Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you again. So uh, we, 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 we have to do some recap here in terms of the technology transfer in which we have here is the scope of the technology transfer divided into two categories, uh, namely business to business, as well as uh, research university to the business or research institution to the business. So this is uh, a distinctive, uh, you know, things happening in, in the in the current norms, uh, you know, either before COVID-19 or after the COVID-19 or current COVID-19, it still applies to, to the same concept in which we have two parties here. Uh, number one, we have uh, the technology transfer to be happen in the business to business environment. And secondly, we have the university or research institution to the business environment. It rarely happened from the industry uh, transfer to the university. Although the possibility is there and some cases uh, that happens, but uh, the majority of the cases basically revolve within the business to business and the university to the business, all right? So here we have uh, several phases in our study, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one focus on the definition, knowledge of the technology transfer, you know, formal, informal, technology transfer modes and as well as the barriers as we discussed previously. And we have the second one, which is the organization issues. We focus to the micro uh, in which we learn about the organization issues. Uh, you know, what happened when you uh, are trying to decide 
what is the best uh, thing that you want to when you want to do with your technology idea you want to uh, you know to give to the people to give to the businesses your technology to transfer the technology or you want to keep within your organization to make sure you can utilize the technology by doing your own uh, uh, you know manufacturing your own uh, marketing and so on so this is the most important part of the uh, you know of the phase of the technology transfer which one do you decide to focus on either you want to use by yourself or you want to give it to the businesses or you want to give a license to the people and so on all right so this is the thing that we want to discuss by today uh, to decide uh, to to market the technology and other than that we have also technology market research packaging the technology and so on uh, you know this technology this technology is not the same as the technology as we can see at the market in you know the mass uh, production technologies you know uh, like car by Tesla, like uh, Samsung laptops, like Apple and so on. This is different. All of the, uh, you know, normal technology or the consumer-based technology we call as tangible technology. And this one we call as the intangible uh, technology. I will discuss this one uh, later. And later on, we have the phase number three, which is the organizational issues, decision in uh, technology transfer initiatives by the point of view of the transferee. All right, question? Any question, guys? Do you mind? Do you have any question? Okay, if you have any question, just, uh, you know, raise up your voice or you just just type uh, in the chat room. So uh, no worries, you can interrupt me anytime. All right? So again, uh, you know, in, in our study for this technology transfer, the focus of the study is uh, mainly focused on the transfer from research university to the business. We are not going to focus on all of the elements of the technology transfer and commercialization because of we have a very limited time in terms of one semester. You know, in order for us to understand the full, uh, you know, structure of the technology transfer, it requires very, very, it will take very, very, you know, a lengthy time. Uh, you know, for, for, for example, in the business, uh, to, to, to the business uh, environment, the ecosystem is very vast, you know, for you to understand. So we are going to focus on the university, research institution, and the business. As well as we put less, uh, you know, focus on the transfer issue because of during the explanation, along the way with the explanation, I will give some, some views in terms of the transfer overview on how they look into this process of technology transfer in the view of the transfer. And then we also want to discuss about the imaging issues, issues in the technology transfer and so on. So now we are discussing about the phase number two, all right? Uh, so, okay, uh, some background on the technology transfer. The basic concept is technology transfer itself will not lead to, will not lead to growth. Okay, ability to maintain and is what required bring in growth, you know, ability so, uh, to become one party to the other party, for example, from the transfer uh, between the transfer to the transfer, you know. Yeah, we have the process of technology transfer, but the technology transfer itself will not lead to, to growth. Why? Because of you have to make sure that the concept of the technology transfer by which you have to maintain and you have to utilize maintain and utilize the appropriate technology to bring in the growth, all right? And then it is the effort that matters, you know, plans and execution. This is the most important part of the technology transfer. Should not be go, should not be a go with the flow basis. So this is not, not, a, not a generalized case, you know, uh, different technology, different cases. So it's not, should be go with a flow, flow basis. So. This is some, some terms of the backgrounds of technology transfer. And areas to be at by the transfer. Again, transfer, we are the transfer, you know, we are the, the, the technology owner, we are the patent holder, we are the inventor of the technology. So areas to be addressed by us. Now we put ourselves in the shoes of the transfer or in the shoes of the inventor of the technology. So number one, we have to uh, you know, to, to discuss, we have to think about the areas of deciding to transfer the technology. 
is it is it possible for us to to transfer our technology to the people at the same time we can protect the technology so we have to decide or is it possible for us to just just uh, do the marketing for the technology we get to all of the production all of the uh, you know uh, all of the maintenance and so on and we just do it by ourselves so we have to do the uh, decision based on this one deciding to transfer the technology and second one technology market research we have we have to do this technology market research we have to do the packaging of the technology although the packaging is almost similar concept with the products but again we have a different things of the packaging for the technology by which we have to protect the technology before we can give the technology to the people and then we have uh, to put the pricing of the technology we have to do the promotion of the technology also we must have the skill to negotiate and to do the agreement this is the most critical part of the technology transfer and commercialization you know in terms of doing the negotiation and the agreement because of since knowing that perhaps our technology is very rare technology so we don't have any references you know to refer on this one or the negotiation and the agreement and so on and also after sales service by which we have to cover on the services and support as well so this is a very important element that to be addressed by the transfer as the owner of the technology you know before you can go further on deciding either you want to transfer or you want to remain or you want to retain the technology within your organization all right so technology as a product so technology technological product cannot be described in the same way we describe other products by looking at the tangible properties this is what i said previously you know we we have this kind of technology that we we call as the 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 intangible products you know why because of technological assets have some unique and attractive qualities that are not always available in other assets winning meaning that is very rare uh, you know functional rare in terms of the, formula, uh, the, the formulation and so on so for the technological products they normally can be sold repeatedly but for this case for this technological base for this technology transfer sometimes we just only can sell the products once for a lifetime this is this is uh, could be happen for example nuclear technology and so on so rights protection attached to the technological products all right and then a technological products is usually defined again for for part number b rights protection attached to the technological products why because of we deliver the raw and the transfer as well all right so a technological product is usually defined in terms of what it permits the one who possesses it to use or uses to do for example if we, if we sell uh, the smartphone and so on you cannot uh, you know you cannot put some boundaries to the people who use the smartphone or oh, you, you you can just install this uh, whatsapp other than that you can install so this is not a kind of that technology this is a kind of technology that you know you give the permit you give the permits to those who possess or to use okay all right in term of know how and so on all right in many cases technological assets are unrecognized or undervalued because they are intangible and most of the time difficult to quantify guys wait a moment i got a call i got a call from my boss wait a moment eh wait a moment
So again, in many cases, technological assets are unrecognized or undervalued because they are intangible and most of the time difficult to quantify. For example, uh, like my case, I have uh, several uh, technologies for the you know horizontal uh, directional drilling equipment. You know, not many people knows about this uh, technology, and the other one uh, currently undergoing. Uh, for the technology transfer is the uh, you know a stainless B hive uh, using a concrete uh, material. That that one also is not for the mass mass uh, production for the for the people for the end user. Uh, so so the knowledge of this one is basically under uh, the, the scope of unrecognized or undervalued because uh, they are intangible and so on. So this is fit to the to the technology transfer concept, right? No, all know how are candidates for commercial technology transfer certain requirements to make it a valuable article of commerce, right? So this is uh, the definition of the technology as a product. All right. I have to stop the video. I don't, otherwise, I uh, got some some uh, lagging of this one, right? So, <clears throat> so this one we have the perceived value. And number one, the most important part is the perceived value by the transferee. So the transferee must look into this one. They look into the value of the technology. And second one, it must be very limited in terms of access because of, uh, you know, the, the, the more limited the access to your technology, the more possibilities for you to put a higher price of your technology or harder for the competition to copy your technology and so on and transferable this is the most important part of the technology transfer is it transferable is the transfer ready to get your technology to obtain your technology are they have uh, all those necessary supporting technologies to allow them to uh, obtain your technology and so on so this is a big question mark here for the transferable if you have all of these elements covered properly and you know how to solve all of this then you can do for the you can go for the technology transfer uh, successfully. All right. So collectively, this intangible asset is known as the intellectual capital, which has yet to be documented, such as know-how oh, or intellectual property, such as patents, copyrights, or trademarks, and others. A lot of uh, definition for this one for the intellectual property rights. So the term of intellectual property relates to the human intellectual creativity or the results of or output of human mind all right so a lot of terms you can you can uh, read on this one it's very basic knowledge for this one so technology transfer involves a great deal of the effective management of intellectual capital and intellectual property so now we have two we have effective management of intellectual capital in which the human capital and so on and intellectual property, the combination of, of both that uh, synergize that can be done in terms of the technology transfer uh, effectively compared to the intellectual property only. All right, believe me, you, you need to have the people uh, to run for the intellectual, intellectual property transfer to be more effective. All right, so marketing, promotion, promoting, selling, delivering product, they, are, cannot, they cannot be touched or measured in tangible terms is a very different and unsettling experience. Now you have something, uh, for my case, I have just only a slide. I have a picture of my products without, without have the physical products to be presented in front of the audience or the transferee. But again, they convinced uh, to, to buy the technology, to, to, you know, to, to have the license of the technology. And some of the cases, you know, they are suing, uh, you know, they, 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 they keep repeatedly, you know, ask me about this process of uh, memorandum of understanding agreement. Why? Because of they want to, to have the rights of the technology, they know the potential of the technology. So that's why the negotiation, the marketing approach, the promotion, the selling and so on, is, is, it is a, a vital part of this technology transfer and uh, to determine on how you be, you will be uh, you know successful in doing the technology transfer especially for the transfer all right 
So we have the type of know-how, knowing how to do something or make something. You can transfer this one. You can uh, materialize this one in terms of the books, you know, guide uh, guide books, you know, DIYs book and so on, for dummies and so on. It can be transferred by a certain type of arrangement, licensing, technical assistance and so on. Not all know how I can did it for technology transfer. Again, so what is the, the, the thing that you cannot you cannot transfer or you cannot patent for yourself medical things you know uh, related to the medical medication and so on for example you know how to uh, you know uh, uh, put assuring you know how to operate uh, the COVID-19 vaccine to give to the people you cannot patent that one because of it is under the general knowledge and it is under the requirements of the people for a continuous living so you cannot patent that one under the medical a lot of things you cannot you cannot patent it's all under the uh, human uh, you know human factors and so on and human sustainability and human survivability so um, <clears throat> uh, for for other things also in the in the field of the military and so on so that one i will not discuss here you have to find other information in the in the uh, you know online and so on so we are we are just discussing about this uh, you know research to the businesses business to the businesses uh, but again, for those who are interested to further your study, for example, in terms of the military technology transfer, medical technology transfer, and so on, you can contact me later, all right? Okay, so we have this term of this intellectual property. Intellectual property refers to creation of the mind. So whatever you have in the mind, you, you create something, you visualize the thing, uh, namely inventions, all right? So you can protect the, the invention through the intellectual property rights, which is divided into two categories. Intelli and industrial property includes pattern for invention, trademarks, blah, blah, industrial design, geographical indication. Copyright covers literary works, such as novels, poems, you know, audios, music, and so on. So this is the category of the intellectual property. All right? So the rationale behind intellectual property protection why because of of course we are going to get incentive to invent and we are going to get incentive to disclose and we are going to get the incentive to commercialize okay one question guys one question why in the current norms the rate of innovation is going to be so high currently the rate of innovation hmm. currently going sky high compared to the last 50 or 100 years ago. Why? Anyone wants to try? Why the rate of innovation currently sky high or tremendous or rapid compared to the last 50 or 100 years ago? Why? Guys, anybody want to wants to try to answer? Or nobody in front of the screen? Hello, guys. Yes, doctor. Okay, why? May I try, doctor? Okay, okay, please, 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 try your best. Uh, for the question, why the rate of innovation increase here, doctor? Yes, yes, yes. It is because I think nowadays the intellectual property protection law and regulation are clear compared in the previous years ago. Okay. All right. Your name is Christopher. Yes, Christopher Hasim. Okay, uh, I'll give you 99 marks, okay? <laughs> Good answer. Thank you very much. Good thank answer. You, okay, you nail it. Okay, all right. So, again, thank you very much for the answer. So, basically, Christopher give the answers of, because of now we have the, 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 the structure of uh, the protection that is very established compared to the previous 50 or 100 years ago. That's correct, very correct. That's why currently, uh, as we can see, the rate of the innovation, the rate of the commercialization of the technology, you know, the rate of the 
intellectual property rights filing and so on is very 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 huge compared to previous previous uh, years or previous uh, decades ago no because of currently people realize that you now we have the opportunity of do the invention we have the opportunity to protect we don't have to worry anymore about this technology to be stolen and so on so we can do the commercialization as soon as possible as fast as possible so the more we invent the technology the more we protect the technology the more money we can gain out of that effort so that's why because of we have the technology we have the protection of the invention the intellectual property rights protection thank you very much uh, christopher for the answer good one okay i hope that everybody can get this idea as well although thank you again for atika uh, Atika also answer because the demand from the market. Of course, again, again, your answer also correct. But the most uh, accurate answer is by Christopher. Again, your answer is good as well. Yeah, definitely. If there is no demand from the market, so there is no use for us to, you know, develop the technology at all. Right. Thank you very much, uh, very much, uh, Atika. All right. So okay. So we move to the next uh, one. Okay. So we have a pattern. Okay, so so guys, I hope that you can read this one. What is pattern? What is uh, the, the kind of the protection that covers under pattern and so on? Please, please, please study on this one. You know, what is patterns? What kind of invention that can be patented? Not limited to this one only, but also you 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 may, may want to study more about this one, all right? Because of I will ask a question about this one on the next uh, quiz, all right? So what is the pattern? What what is the, the the protection that can be covered by pattern and so on? And then what is trademarks? All right, we have the uh, trademarks for the names, for the logos, and so on. So we have the sign symbol. Some of the logos they put TM, you know, TM. Some of the logo they put R in circle. So you have to find what is the meaning of the TM. You know, what is the meaning of R? R, R in terms of the uh, wordings is the registered, TM is the trademarks. So why is it, it is different, although it's, it's still in the same the same category. So you have to study on this one, you have to find. I will not explain on detail on this one, all right? So we also have the industrial design. So what is the differences between industrial design and the patent protection? Although some of the cases, you know, uh, your technology or your, your design can be fall under both, under industrial design and under pattern. So which one that you should focus on? So this is the question that I will ask either in this quiz, in the, in the quiz or in the final exam and so on. So you must be ready. You must be in the know of this one. All right. So other forms of IPs, again, we're repeating the same thing, copyrights, you know, we have the trade secrets, you know, a lot of things. So this is the hierarchy of the patent protection, of the IP protection. So now, as, as we can see, we have the trade secrets, we have the copyrights, trademarks, and patents. So the most, the most, strength, uh, you know, the, 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 the strongest uh, protection is, of course, patents. But again... For you to apply for a patent protection is very, very, you know, very hard because it requires you uh, to give a detail about your technology and so on. So, uh, in, in contrast, you know, we have the trade secret. But knowing the trade secret is not uh, for the publication, it's not for the, for the public, you know. You know, the KFC, they put the recipe under the trade secret terms. Trade secret protection. Why? Because of if they put the recipe under the patents or under the copyrights, the recipe will be revealed to the people, to the public. But if they put the technology or the uh, you know the recipe under the trade secret, nobody will know about the technology. Nobody will know about the recipe or the formulation. So it will be safe. But again, there is ways that you can uh, protect your ideas or you protect your recipe by putting in some documentation, I will show later on. And whenever the people uh, suddenly publish uh, online about your recipes and so on, out of nowhere, for example, you can file, uh, you know, you can file a, a legal action, you know, uh, because of they publish your trade secrets if you want to. But if you opted to not go for a legal action, you, you just be like KFC nowadays, you know, you can still protect your ideas up until the end of the time. All right? 
So this is the beauty of the trade secrets. But if anybody discover your your trade secret or your recipe, it will not be protected anymore. All right, you can you can go for a legal and so on. But again, you will expose your technology because of the legal process requires you to do so. So you will lose. But in other parts, you will be safe in terms of the public exposure. So no public exposure for the trade secrets. Okay. So this is this is all the thing that you have to, you know, consider in terms of, you know, uh, protecting your ideas. Which one do you prefer to make sure that your technology can be sustainable for a last longer, all right? Compared to the, uh, each other, all right? So we have a lot of intellectual property rights in terms of this one, such as patent, trademarks, copyrights, you know, industrial design. Plant variety, trade secrets, layout design of IC, geographical indication. For example, we have the melons in Perlis, namely Harumanis. So the name of the Harumanis is basically geographical indication of Perlis. So you cannot you cannot uh, put the same name of the melons in Johor, uh, or the, sorry, melons mango in Johor for the same name of Harumanis, for example, because of they already filed for the geographical indication. So this is uh, becoming the part of the tourism, of the, of the image of the state and so on. So this is the thing that you have to know. We have a lot of, type, uh, a lot of uh, types of the IPR to protect your technology, uh, to protect the transfer technology before it can be transferred to the other parties, all right? Okay, guys, any question? As of this moment, please. Any question, guys? Mm. Any question? No question. Oh my God. I'm not sure either I'm going, I'm giving you, uh, you know, a very clear explanation or. <laughs> You know, it is too complex for you guys to understand. Please, please, guys, please uh, give a good feedback to me. Uh, what should I improve in terms of explaining this thing to you? If I'm, I am too fast, please let me know. I'm going to, you know, change my gear. All right. But please understand the context of the study. You know, I know that this is a very challenging moment of COVID-19 online and so on. But please, you know, uh, have fun in this in this class. <laughs> Don't worry. Two-way communication again. You can you can give your opinion. You know, you can comment me. You can criticize and so on. No worries. All right. So um, <clears throat> we have a lot of uh, characteristics uh, in terms of the patents, trade secret, and copyrights. So as you can see, this is the attributes of the patents, you know, registration and protection of IP, IP rights and so on, required to protect IP rights. So you can read all of this. But again, the most important part of this IP protection, intellectual property rights, is basically duration of protection. As you can see below there, uh, the last rule of this table, duration of protection, we have generally 20 years for, uh, from the time of registration. Whenever you patent, who file first? Who file first? Uh, for example, you have your friends in the know of your technology. Now you are becoming the enemy of your friends, and you both of you are going to file the same thing. But the thing is, who going to file first is the most important part of the IPR protection. You know, when you go for a filing of the technological protection or IP protection, you have to submit as soon as possible before your competitors before your enemy going to submit the, the IPR. Why? Because of they are going to be very, very uh, legit, go very, very, uh, you know, fair in terms of this one. It doesn't matter that either your competition, either your enemy, either, either your brother, your sister, and so on, who's going to file first is going the first name, is going the first owner of the technology. All right? So you, you whenever you have the technology, Whenever you have the secret, please go and file first before your uh, other person or your enemy or your nemesis go into fight. All right. So, trade secrets until secret is disclosed. So this is the secret of the KFC. Up until now, nobody, uh, you know, going to claim. Oh, I have the secret recipe by the uh, KFC, and KFC just keep silent, and the people again in the know of nothing. 
you know so this is the beauty of the trade secret but again when when your 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 true ingredient are really exposed for some cases for example for example you have the fuel type of ron 97 so you put under the trade secret but when the competitors gain the formulation of the ron 97 you can cannot play around anymore because of they already nail your formulation and they, they can use on the mass market because of the requirement of the run as the 7 for example uh, is the need of the engine to be operated so using your formulation so this is a very different case of the kfc you know although you change a bit of the formulation of the secret and so on the people still can consume the the chicken so there is no uh urgency in terms of swing the people and so on you just need to keep uh, your branding instead of thinking about your intellectual property rights and so on so that's why kfc going to put the trade secrets in their formulation in their uh you know ingredients to make sure that they can focus on their marketing and product improvement right so for copyright generally 70 years beyond the life of the innovator or the creator or the transferor for works copyrighted before 1978 the total term is 95 years so again in our living nowadays at your age for example most of the majority of you you know the millennials you know you have generally 70 years beyond after your 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 your, your dad you know dying you have your son so your son will be uh, you know will be the owner of the uh, creator of the uh, technology or the uh, music or the license of this one of the copyrights you know up until 70 years so that's why a lot of people in the uh, you know the industry of the what we call uh, industry of the uh, musical industry and so on they are, they are, they love to doing this because of they can own uh, the, the the copyright for for at least for more than one generation all right this is the thing of the copyrights all right so technology transfer involve the effective management of valuable assets categorized as intellectual property so again when you do the uh, efforts of the technology transfer the transfer must think of how to make sure that the effective management of valuable assets could be achieved this is very important you know in order for you to arrange everything because of technology transfer you know involved with many many strategic management things many procurement things you know documentation you know terms legal and so on whenever you have good teams you know with you you have in your in your company a legal team you have advisory team from the research university advisory teams from the academics uh, from the industry and so on you will have a complete and strong team so this is the most uh, you know uh, fatal in the intellectual prop- in the technology transfer uh, scope before you can proceed to transfer your technology to the receiver of the technology therefore proper recognition of these unique assets are essential in the technology transfer process all right okay so this is the dilemma uh, currently the dilemma of the technology transfer should one use valuable self developed technology to achieve competitive advantage in one own facility only okay one own facility only or should one actively market the right to use for example licensing to give the licensing you know royalty base and so on one technology as a core product of the commodity itself so this one again uh, some of the technology you have to think of or oh, this one perhaps for 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 our company to be used because of we want to protect the knowledge of this technology because of it's still new in this in this market for example so you want to have the complete control over your technology and so on so it is better for you to retain the technology by yourself so you can do your marketing you can do your improvement to, to the technology and so on but sometimes when the technology is obsolete in your company you want to think about the giving the technology to the transfer you know you want to license the technology and so on because of you know that the life cycle of the technology is not going to be very 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 long so it's going to be very short 
So you are going to 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 go for a market and so on. So this is the most important part of the decision making in the company. Either you want to keep the technology within your company, or you want to give the technology to the people through the technology transfer. So you have to decide. You have to decide. You have to uh, to have a strategic decision in terms of this one. All right. <clears throat> So the decision to transfer, in general, the decision to transfer technology involves the following related decision. So, so this, this decision is basically based on three main pillars, you know, main pillars in which you have your organization. So you must be based on the organization decision, it's not by yourself. And second one is the product management decision. You have a lot of products, you know, you have a product, product A, product B, product C, and so on and so forth. So you must have a product manage management decision. You know, they know about this product and so on. They know what is the limit, limit of this technology, what is the requirement of this technology and so on. So you have to have the product management decision. And the last one, product selection decision. Because of not all of this technology should be given to the transferee. Some of the technology you should return inside your, your firms and so on because of the competitive advantage and because of the sustainability factors of the company. So this is this is important. Please memorize this one. You have your organization, so you must be uh, the the decision must be decided by the organization as well, by the product management decision, by the product selection decision. All right. So guys, any question? Any question? Any question before I move to the next slide? Any question? Uh, doctor, just now you mentioned about the copyright is 70 years, right? Uh, I think that one is uh, US, but for Malaysia is 50. Uh, which one should we follow if we want to answer this? Okay, good question. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, or Hazel, if I'm not mistaken, your name, isn't it? Yes, yes. Thank you very much for a good question. Okay, uh, you asked about the question of the duration of protection for the copyright uh, types, right? So, yes, yes. Again, uh, what we learn now, now today is basically from the international slides of the uh, you know, reference. We have the reference from the, uh, basically from UK. So, we have generally 70 years based on that country. But if we want to do the filing in Malaysia, so now the requirement is based on Malaysia's requirement. If if you file for uh, in the in the in the geographical location of Malaysia, so we are bound with the Malaysia's regulation of the MIPO. So you have to check again in the MIPO what is the current protection of the copyrights. So what is the length of the protection? So this is just for you as for your general knowledge. You know and this is for the international market. But again, when when you file your protection in Malaysia. You also want to look into the international protection as well. So you will be fall into this one of the uh, condition, you know, 70 years, perhaps in the Singapore, perhaps in the Asia Pacific region and so on. So it depends on the location that you apply for the protection. I hope that I answer, I answer your question. Again, that is a very, very good question. Thank you very much. Is it okay, Hazel? Yes, thank you, doctor. All right, you're welcome. Good question. So, uh, based on this organizational uh, decision, uh, so, you know, you know, this is the organization attitude, the commitment of the organization. Because of technology transfer as a business, how they organize themselves for the technology transfer activities. You know, when you, you, you plan for the technology transfer to be done between one organization to the other organization, which means from the transfer organization to the transferees organization, you are merging their mindset, their thinking, their way of doing uh, their job, their work, and so on. Not just only the technology, but of course, they have to assimilate with the process. So that's why the attitude of the organization is very important. The commitment of this organization is very important. So if you have a very small company, let's say a new startup, the process is going to be very simple because of, you know, you, you, you know your partners very well. You just uh, start up the company with them. You have a commitment of a very short term. You know, the decision is made by the, you know, short term arrangement and so on. So you have a very good in terms of the flexibility. But what if 
you have a very big companies, you know, uh, for example, you have around 200 now staffs, you know, you have uh, so many assets, you have so many uh, partners in your business and so on. So this is a very challenging thing, you know. You have to make sure that the whole of your organization, at least top management of the organization, agree with the efforts of doing the technology transfer. All right. So this is a basically organizational structure under conscious decision with a full-blown support of management. You have to obtain this one at the very first place before you can go further. Why? Because of all of your company structure must be in one say. They say that, okay, we support on this one. Okay, we have the we have the equipments, we have the facilities and so on. Anything happen, you still have a strong support, strong commitment from your team members and so on. All right? So again, you must have the organizational decision in the clear and understand of the objective for the technology transfer. All right, so this is for the organizational decision. So as you can see, this is the, uh, the similar model for the organizational uh, decision and so on, the filter, all right? And we have the product management decision in which addressing issue of recognizing the existence of two products, i.e. the tangible and the technological products. So what is the tangible and the technological products? For example, we have the technology of machineries, for example. So the machineries is basically, we protect the technology and we protect as well the guide book, you know, the, 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 the technology schematic and so on. So are we selling the tangible and the technological product or both. For example, we have the schematic of the technology. If we sell the schematic, so what for we sell the technology for them? Because of they know the secrets of the technology. So which one we want to give to the people? But again, they will ask for the guidance, the schematic of the teams because of they want to do the troubleshooting, they want to do the uh, maintenance and so on. So this is the dilemma in the product product management decision. Some the majority of the companies basically they will give both of the technology in some strict condition of the arrangement. But for some of the example, they just give the technology, you know, the part of the tangible, and they never give the part of the intangible, for example, the codings of the technology. For example, Microsoft, they are giving the technology, the licensing to the people, but again, they never give the core of the technology, which is the coding of the technology. Why? Because of the, they want to protect their technology for the longer terms of use, all right? So this is the product management decision, okay? So you have to understand as well, and you have to segregate the technology. What is the intangible technology and what is the tangible technology in your area? So this is the thinking that must be uh, in, in every, you know, uh, transfer. They must have to think. They must have this thinking in their mind, the product management decision, okay? So component of the technology, we have the technology base, we have the tangible assets, new products, plants, equipments, and so on. We have the intangible assets as well. We have the formal, patents, license, R&D, IPR, so on, informal, tacit knowledge, you know, tacit knowledge. So this is the, the, the thing that we have to understand, we have to map, uh, in, in, in our, uh, you know, the technology in our structure of the company that we want to give or we want to protect or we want to retain in the company. So you must do the mapping of this one to understand, all right? Okay, and the next one is the product selection decision, choosing the right technological product to market. All right, so you have to do the evaluation. Evaluation that helps to assess its portfolio of technologies so they can be licensed to set up royalty rate values, support the negotiation process of particular technology. So again, as I previously said, decisions are more complex in larger business organization because of the bureaucracy. Unlike in small organization, you have a very, easy, very, very limited number of team members and so on. So the main worry is the unnoticed candidates. You know, technology may have been overlooked. So you must look into the product selection properly. So uh, the case of universities and research institutions, 
So that's why we have the ICC, Innovation and Commercialization Center, to cater on this one, you know, to decide on this one together with the researcher, with the innovators, to help them decide so what kind of technology you have, uh, how you want to break down this technology, is it possible for you uh, to file more than one pattern and so on. So is it possible for you to just give this one version to the end user first or to the uh, transferee first before moving to the next one? So this is the decision, product selection decision that must be made before we can go for the technology transfer. All right, so this is uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, the, to, to classify technological product as a standalone derivatives, add-on supplement or non-competitive. So this is the types of the technological product. So number one again, standalone meaning the product standalone can be operated. For example, you put something over your over your transfer without any supporting technologies, just only the electricity. It can be run standalone, very simple one, straightforward. Derivatives or add-on supplement. So meaning that you put a scaffolding uh, technology to the current technology that they have in their facility, or new technology that requires new facilities by the transfer to be uh, installed very at very first place before it can be used. Or the last one is the non-competitive, which means no other technology, no other company in this world having the similar technology as yours. So, so the value will be very high because of it is a very rare. It is just only your solution applicable in this world nowadays. So this is the type of the uh, technological product classification, right? So product selection criteria based on that uh, decision, some general determinants. Number one is must be value to the buyer licensee or transfer must be clear on this one. So you must uh, do the uh, rankings, you know, uh, the higher the value is better, the, the, the better the technology to be transferred. And technology transferability, you have to do the due diligence. Due diligence means that you have to do pre-study about your transfer. Who is the transfer? Is it bogus? Is it a scammer or something like that? So remove that one. But what about new startup of the technology uh, of the transfer? So you have to think about their ability to absorb, their ability to accept your technology and to run the technology in their company as well. Are they going to have all the required necessary technologies, supplementary technologies, supporting technologies to run for our technology? So you have to answer this question first. If they don't have that one, so you might want to consider the technology transfer to be hold at the very first place because of you know that whenever you give the technology to them, they cannot utilize the technology to its fullest limits, all right? And then you have to understand as well uh, about their marketing and so on. Is it possible for them to run for the marketing for the product? Are, uh, are they uh, are they having the customer hmm. for, the, for the technology that they will utilize later on? You have to think up until that level because of whenever they, they, they get the technology, they bring, they bring, uh, they, they carry your, your branding as well, your name as well, right? And then what is the resource or requirements of the resource? This one is usually uh, when the technology transfer uh, happening uh, between, uh, uh, you know, in, in internationally between uh, more than one country, you know, perhaps, for example, we transfer the technology from Malaysia to Uganda and what is the resource requirement in the Uganda what, what we have there, is it similar here and so on. So you have to, you know, uh, determine on this one. And then the position of the technology to companies' competitiveness. What happened when you have to visualize, you have to do the projection, what happened when the technology is in the transfer is, uh, you know, position? Are they going to be more competitive compared to the previous one? Are they going to be more successful? So you have to do the projection. You have to do the due diligence, not just only for you to sell the technology to the people, but also you have to keep the relationship between transfer and transfer in a very good manner. All right. So what about the IP protection and vulnerability? You know, vulnerability. Uh, so what is the protection that you have? Perhaps copyright? Is it enough for you? You want to change to the something like patents and so on. But now you have protected in Malaysia and suddenly some other people in some other countries, for example, Papua New Guinea and so on, they want to use your technology. Now you have to file for international patent and you have to check again, is it the international patent covers the country 
that you want to transfer your technology as well. So this is what we call as due diligence. You have to understand. You have to know. If there are no protection, there is no protection in the in the country that you will be going to give the technology, then you have to think about giving as one off, selling the technology as one off to them, selling the, 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 the pattern to them as, as one off. So you don't have to worry or you don't have to think about this technology uh, issue anymore or vulnerability anymore. All right. Okay, so we have uh, so many more uh, the, the uh, sources or criteria such as technology readiness, social benefits, economical and market factors, legal and regulatory. A lot, lot of things you have to read on this one, All right? So uh, again, this is the just the just the mapping of the technological readiness, benefit impact, economical, legal and regulatory. So in the company as a transfer. In the either in the business or in the research institution, you have to do this mapping to make sure that you understand where is your position, so what is your strength and what is your weaknesses in terms of this one. So you must understand what is the legal regulatory requirement in the country that you want to give the technology or in the district area or in the uh, some of the sensitive areas of Malaysia, for example, what is the requirements? So for example, you want to implement your technology in the military compound area in the medical compound area, health camera comp So you have to think about this one. You know, you have to understand the condition. Okay, I'm not going to explain on this one. So please, uh, you do your, your readings on this one. So this is the appraisal step of technology classification. We have the breath assessment, licensing limitation assessment, potential assessment, and we do the potential value diagram. But I will not focus on this one to the depth, to in, in depth on this one, right? Okay, guys, do you have any uh, question on this one? Any question, guys? Any question? Okay, I changed my question. Anybody here? <laughs> In front of the screen. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. <laughs> That's great. Yes, okay. It's so silent, you know. Sometimes I'm 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 wondering when uh, <laughs> we are going to finish all of this pandemic. Uh, you know, duration. So stress sometimes. Uh, teaching in the online uh, uh, what we call online platform because of I cannot see your. <laughs> <laughs> what we call your 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 response, you know, your feedback in terms of the eye contact and so on. But again, we have to brace this moment. This is the you know the function of the technology, so we have to use the technology to the fullest. All right. So thank you very much uh, for your feedbacks. Okay. If you have anything, if you have any question, you have any suggestion and so on, please, uh, you know, you can interrupt me anytime. Okay. So classifying standalone technological product based on the possible efforts required. So either uh, we, we move uh, standalone technology to the license as is, or modify to license, or either we want to sell the standalone. So again, based on the uh, tabulance table or the, or the metric, as we previously learned about this, uh, you know, this one, okay? So you, you, uh, you, you must understand the metric of this one first, mapping, okay, do the mapping and this one before you move to the classifying standalone technological product based on the possible efforts required. Either you want to go for the license as is because of you understand that, or now we will understand that the condition of the transfer is basically they have all of the required uh, necessary technologies. So you don't have to move, you don't have to do anything else. Uh, and we, we, we are going to give into the same uh, country of Malaysia in the district that is very general, not, uh, you know, not related to the military, not related to the healthcare and so on. So we can do license as is because of we know that we don't have to do anything yet. All right. So what if we move to the next, uh, you know, location, you know, military area and so on, some conditions between the legal and so on. So we have to modify to license. And the last one, if that location, as I said previously, for example, in the Uganda, for example, that we cannot cover the license, we cannot cover the, the, the patent protection over there because of the price too high or the, the, the process too, too complex for us to finish. So it is better for us to, to think of, to sell the technology. 
But of course, the technology that we can control or we can, uh, you know, uh, perhaps we can come up with a better technology in the future because of we don't want them to become our competitors as well. So this is the decision or classification of the standalone technological product based on the possible efforts required. All right. So how about technology which we do not have to transfer? Uh, what is the technology that we do not have to transfer? Again, covers under the medical field under the, the uh, military areas and so on. So some of the knowledge is basically general knowledge. You cannot transfer the technology. It's very, very common. It's very general basic knowledge. You can do the, your, your, your research in the Google and so on. A lot of information on this one, all right? So the life cycle approach for planning and implementing a technology transfer project. Okay, life cycle is very important. So now we have a six stage. Uh, of the uh, you know uh, of the life cycle of technology transfer, of course number one we want to identify the technology needed and making a business case to obtain corporate approval. So now we have to prepare you know we have to uh, identify what is the technology the best technology that we we want to go further and so on and searching for possible technology sources and assessing offers. You know now now you you have to assess the environment, the the uh, criteria the attributes and uh, requirements for the technology sources and so on. And the next step is negotiating with shortlisted suppliers and finalizing the deal. For example, you want to create a highly, uh, what we call uh, a highly uh, tech of the processor, like M1 processor of the MacBook Pro, for example. So you have to negotiate with a shortlisted supplier. Are they going to supply to you for the next 10 years or five years and so on? So you have to negotiate. And you have to finalize the deal because of later you will have to transfer this technology to the transferee. And you must know what is the parameters of your uh, availability to give them the supplies. And then you have to prepare the technology transfer implementation plan. Then you go implementing and assimilating and assessing the impact of the technology transfer project. So again, you have to reflect, you have to look again what is the best thing that you can do, what is the, the bad thing about this technology transfer, you have to improve and so on through assessing the impact of the technology transfer projects. Okay, so this is the life cycle approach for planning and implementing technology transfer in detail. Okay, you have to uh, do your own revision in this one, I will not display the further on this one. Okay, all right. <laughs> Done. Chapter 5 and Chapter 6. Do you have any question, guys? For this one? Mm. Any question? So we have completed Chapter number 5 and Chapter number 6 uh, as in the e-learning. Uh, you can check again. Uh, so by tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, right? If I'm not mistaken, we have a class by tomorrow, right? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay, uh, tomorrow we are going to discuss about the group assignment only. And uh, okay, wait, we have a question in the chat, doctor. How our article review, our article review will be graded? Okay. Uh, as I said previously, uh, you have to do three topics, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. No, it's not. Okay, the human. Okay. Although I put your 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 marks basically for the individual assignment is twenty marks. You know, 20 marks. For example, uh, uh, topic topic one, 10 marks. Topic two, 10 marks. Topic three, 10 marks. I will pick the the best the best mark of your out of your uh, yes two to the best two out of your three uh, topics to make sure that you can score on your assignment. But again, for for the for some cases like previous semester and so on, you know, some students they they are not managed to do uh, well in all of these uh, three topics. So sometimes I do some, uh, you know, what we call uh, uh, some adjustment to make sure that uh, the marks can be based on your efforts as well, you know, based on your efforts as well. For example, all of three uh, assignment, uh, all of three tasks, topic number one, topic number two, topic number three, you obtain uh, six, six and six. Perhaps your marks is not 12, perhaps your marks could be going 13, 14 or something like that. So it will be based totally on your efforts again because of I'm going to give 
uh, based on your efforts. All right. So not just only for your topics and so on, but in terms of your efforts, as well as some uh, additional marks from the quiz and so on. If you are in the borderline, for example, you obtain your marks of 17, 18, something like that. So I'll give some consideration based on your, uh, you know, your quiz answer and so on. Because of this is a core subject. You know? This is a very tough subject for the technology transfer. Believe me, a lot of students, uh, you know, failed in the subject huh? uh, previously. And uh, starting from the last year, uh, since I'm doing this uh, team teaching in Dr. with uh, Dr. Razib and so on, the results going better, not because of me, but because of the implementation of the online uh, teaching uh, and then the MCO condition. So we are going to give some flexibilities to the students, you know, knowing that you are putting your efforts to do the online study, you know, attending online classes and so on. So I really appreciate all the effort. All right. I hope that I answer your question. Uh, Lee, you man. Can we extend submission date to 20 May? Why? <laughs> Could you please give me the reason why you want to extend the, 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 the submission date? You want? Why? Why you want to extend? It's okay, it's okay. You can give your reason. Why you want to extend? Okay, course article hard to find and interpret. Okay, all right. Uh, that's the purpose of the assignment, basically, for you to have some difficulties, you know, to answer because of by not having yeah, yeah. you're not going to, uh, you know, push yourself to the limit. Okay, all right. Any question? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Again. Kalau artikel tu kena bayar tu macam mana? Okay, guys. Uh, if the article you you have to purchase. Uh, so I suggest I, I I suggest that you don't have to download for the article, switch to other article. But believe me, there is. Okay. Okay. Again, I think you have to go deeper and deeper. Try to search again. And please don't go straight forward, you know. Some of the cases uh, for the uh, literature, you have to go beyond the normal searching or beyond the normal overview of the article. For example, I know that your, your, your start, uh, the student style of doing the search is basically you put the words of the commercialization or the technology transfer or the technology commercialization and then just search through that way and you pick the, the most relevant to your topic. I understand that way. But again, you have to do the extrapolation. means that you have to look into the content rather than the topic. All right? You have to look into the content of the paper. For example, some of the paper, they didn't they mention about the technology commercialization or technology transfer, but inside the paper, they explain about the technology commercialization. All right? That's the beauty of the technology transfer and commercialization because of it's very flexible. A lot of things you can play around. It's not necessarily to find apple to apple, you know? an apple for an apple for the topics. So I give you the flexibility to justify based on your, uh, you know, best justification why you choose this topic. And, and I'm, I'm not uh, putting you any limitation of, uh, you know, assessing the topic. For example, journals, review, review journals or index journals or just only uh, a normal paper or thesis is up to you. No worries. All right. I'm giving you full flexibility. So I hope that you can find the right article okay. for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doctor, as uh, you want to, actually, we have to buy a lot of, like, there are a lot of articles which are not free. Okay. Uh, one alternative, uh, although for my case, you know, this is my research area, technology transfer and technology commercialization. Uh, for my case, I, I, I produce a lot of paper. I never uh, buy any papers from, from any publisher. But oh. again, I understand that the limitation of the students since knowing that you perhaps you still in dilemma of the what kind of thing you want to search and what kind of thing you want to download and so on. You can use the Science Hub. You know, Science Hub, you can download through that one. Or you can use the thesis, you know, searching by the library and so on. You can use that as well. And some of the information, you know, you can get from the online, uh, uh, not just on, uh, not, not, not from the full paper, but from the, uh, what we call abstract only, some of the information. You can you can gain from the abstract only. That's why 
it's, uh, I'm, I'm not limiting you to put just only three references, but you can put more than three references to do the review. All right? So again, so the topic two, we all, in then the last one, we write spontaneously. Can I have to submit on time? All right. You mind? The most important part is you understand the context of the assignment, not the assignment itself. You must understand the question of the assignment. All right? You must, you know, understand the, 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 the thing that I ask you to do. Okay, don't worry about the references. Don't worry about the, uh, you know, the, the, the content too much. But you must understand the assignment. All right? So I hope that I, I answer your question. You mind? Okay, do you mind? You want to ask more question? Okay lah. Try your best, for sure. A lot of things you can do it, you know? Okay, I give you some, uh, some idea. Okay, some idea. Uh, some of the topic, I ask you about this uh, contribution of the technology transfer to the economy. Okay? You don't want to look into the, uh, straightforward into the technology transfer and the contribution to the economy. You don't want to look into that way. You want to look into the reality. For example, nowadays we have the Elon Musk, we have Tesla, we have Microsoft, we have Apple and so on. So your explanation is basically is not based on the academic only. You can do, you can find. I, I didn't say that in the, in the assignment brief that you have to follow rightly from the journal, referred journal, academic journal and so on. You can refer to the current development of the economy, you know, current development of the technology, you know, you can do the explanation based on that. Why? Because I, have, I want you to see, you know, the broader range of the knowledge, not just only for the academics, all right? But now nobody asked me about this one up until you asked me, so I explain on this one. So you can find in any uh, resources, as long as the resource is concrete, no issues, you know, no bogus, no scammer, then it's okay. Oh. All right? So, I hope that you can have some, uh, you know, openness in your mind. Try to do, try to try your best. No your scammer. Article. All right. Any other question? Guys, any other question? Uh, no question? No question. Uh, okay. Okay, if the if the if there is no question uh, anymore, I hope that all of you guys uh, you can do uh within the time frame given. Uh, you know you have to do the submission by if I'm not mistaken by 13th of uh, May 2021. If I'm not mistaken, right? So please do your best. Uh, you know, I believe that uh, all of you can do it. Can do it. You know, uh, without any big problems. And believe me, the more you dig, the more better for you because of you are going to learn a lot of things about the technology transfer and so on. Uh, but again, I'm not. I'm not going to be too strict in terms of you know uh, uh, do the markings for you because of this condition of the MCO. You know, uh, we know the limitation of the students and so on. So I'm not encouraging you as well to buy uh, from any journals, you know, to, to get the full information about this one. So, you know, just, just do your best, you know, just do your best. All right. So uh, I hope the best for you guys uh, during this uh, Ramadan. So we are going to meet again by tomorrow for the group assignment brief. So I hope for the best of you guys. If you have any other question, you can call me, you can message me, okay, uh, anytime, and I will try my best to respond to you as soon as possible. All right, guys, again, thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you very much for listening to the lecture, and I hope this session today is uh, going to give you something about this uh, you know, product, uh, product decision, management decision, and so on related to the marketing efforts of the technology transfer. All right, thank you very much again. Yeah, you did still 13 May. <laughs> still 13 May. All right? Okay, all the best, guys. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Assalamualaikum. Good evening. Bye-bye.
Thank you, Dokter. Thank you, Dokter. Oke, you're welcome. Thank you, Dokter. Thank you, Dokter.